In the last video, we learned two key concepts of a linear homogeneous system of ODEs. First, its steady state and second, its general solution. We learned that if the determinant of the coefficient matrix of a linear homogeneous system of ODEs is not equal to zero, then it has only one steady state at zero zero. Solution of such a system is given by the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the coefficient matrix. One solution will be x equal to e to the power lambda t into v, where lambda is the eigenvalue and v is the corresponding eigenvector. If a system has n linearly independent solution such as x1, x2 up to xn, then the general solution is x equal to c1 into x1 plus c2 into x2 plus up to cn into xn. All these c's are constants that we calculate from the initial condition. Note that the x is the position vector of the system. So the general solution gives the time trajectory of the system on the phase space. This generalized solution also shows the stability of the steady state. Particularly the eigenvalues that we used here define the stability. Let's explore the stability issue using a two-dimensional system. We have a system of two dependent variables. The eigenvalues are lambda 1 and lambda 2. The eigenvectors, the corresponding eigenvectors are v1 and v2. To get the position vector, we are multiplying these two eigenvectors by two scalar quantities. And then we are summing those. For example, we have multiplied v1 by c1 into lambda 1t. That gives us a new vector u1. With time, the scalar term that is c1 into e to the power lambda 1t will either increase or decrease depending upon the sign of lambda 1. So the behavior of the vector u1 depends upon the sign of eigenvalue lambda 1. Similarly, the behavior of u2 depends upon the sign of the other eigenvalue lambda 2. Let's take an example. Suppose both the eigenvalues are negative. Then with time, both u1 vector and u2 vector will get shorter. As the position vector is a resultant of these two vectors, with time our system will get closer and closer to 0, 0, the steady state. And eventually it will collapse to the steady state. That means this steady state is a stable steady state. Wherever you start in the phase plane, with time the system will asymptotically reach this steady state. So we can say that when all the eigenvalues are real and negative, the steady state is stable. In fact, with little imagination you can show that this would be true even for higher dimensional systems too. Now consider a system with one eigenvalue negative and the other one is positive. In this system with time, one vector will shrink and the other one will grow. So with time, one vector will pull the system towards the steady state and the other will push it away from the steady state. Eventually, the system will move away from the steady state at 0, 0. The phase portrait of this system is called a saddle. In fact, the system we analyzed in the last video is an example of saddle. One eigenvalue is plus 3, the other one is negative 1. For a two-dimensional system, it is very easy to calculate the eigenvalues. For a coefficient matrix A, lambda, the eigenvalue, is equal to trace A plus minus square root of trace A square minus 4 dt A. The whole thing is divided by 2. So the sign of lambda depends upon the trace and determinant of A. That is why we perform stability analysis of two-dimensional system on a trace determinant plot. In a trace determinant plot, the trace of the coefficient matrix is on the horizontal axis. The determinant is on the vertical one. On the yellow line, trace A square is equal to 4 into date A. So below this line, 
trace a square is bigger than 4 date A. Consider date A is less than 0, means negative. That means we are below the trace axis. As date A is negative, the term under square root is positive and bigger than trace A. So, one eigenvalue will be positive and the other will be negative. Therefore, irrespective of the value of trace A, we will get a saddle. Now, consider a positive determinant. Trace A is positive, determinant of A is positive and date A is less than trace A square by 4. So, we are here below the yellow line. With these conditions, both the eigenvalues will be positive. That means with time the system will move away from the steady state. So this steady state is unstable. If you draw the phase portrait, it would look like as if the arrows are emerging from the steady state and flowing away from it. That is why we call it a source node. Just the opposite will happen if the trace is negative. Trace is negative determinant of a is positive and determinant of a is less than trace a square by 4. So we are here. With these conditions, both the eigenvalues will be negative. As I discussed earlier, the steady state of this system will be asymptotically stable. The phase portrait of this system looks like as if the arrows are all flowing towards the steady state and vanishing there. That's why we call this steady state a sink node. What if we are somewhere above the yellow line? Here, date A is greater than trace A square by 4. So the term under the square root is negative. The eigenvalues would be complex number of the form A plus minus I into B. I will not show the derivation here, but you have to take my words that when the eigenvalues are complex numbers, the system has oscillation. That means the dependent variables oscillate with time. Consider the case of trace A equal to 0. That means we are somewhere on the determinant axis. For trace A equal to 0, the real part of the eigenvalues is 0 and the dependent variable show periodic oscillations. Therefore, on the phase plane, the system would revolve around the steady state in a closed trajectory. This type of phase portrait is called centered type. The steady state at 0, 0 is not stable. If you disturb it from the steady state, the system will revolve around it in a closed orbit. When the trace of the coefficient matrix is not zero, the real part of the complex eigenvalue will be also non-zero. In such a system, the dependent variables show damped oscillation. Consider date A is greater than trace A square by 4 and trace A is negative. So we are somewhere here. The real part of the complex eigenvalues are negative. In this system, the dependent variable will have damped oscillation. With time, the oscillation will decay and the system will reach the steady state. So the steady state is stable. If you start somewhere away from the steady state, with time, the system will follow a spiral trajectory and would collapse on 0, 0, the steady state. This type of phase portrait is called a spiral sink. Just the opposite happens when the trace A is positive. In this case, the real part of the complex eigenvalue is positive. So the steady state is unstable. An oscillation with increasing amplitude takes the system away from the steady state. Here also the trajectory is spiral, but it starts at the steady state and fans out. So we call it a spiral source. Here is the complete trace determinant plot for a two-dimensional system. This diagram is easy to remember and helps us to draw a quick conclusion about the possible dynamics in a system. 
So take your time and make sure that you understand this plot very well. With this video, we end our discussion on linear systems and would move to nonlinear systems. This may sound a repetition, but let me jot down what we have learned on a linear homogeneous system of ODs for any number of dependent variables. If the determinant of the coefficient matrix is not equal to zero, then the steady state is unique. At the steady state, all the dependent variables are zero. The generalized solution of the system is defined in terms of eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the coefficient matrix. And the last one, the signs of the eigenvalues or if those are complex, then the real part of eigenvalues determine the stability of the steady state. When those are negative, the steady state is stable. That's all for this video. Thank you for learning with me.